Hello and welcome to part three of the Commerce Connect introduction and understanding video series. In this video, we'll be looking at the shopping cart implementation within Commerce Connect and specifically how this relates to engagement automation. So first off, what does Commerce Connect bring to carts? Well, within the example implementation in the Not Commerce and Starter Kit examples, on the home page, there's a number of out of the box rules that come with Commerce Connect that you can see for carts. Uh, those include cart values and cart totals. Secondly, there's an out of the box implementation that uses engagement automation to do uh, local storage and cart persistence. And lastly, I'll show you how to disable that because in the NOP Commerce examples, in addition to doing local persistence within engagement plans, it also does cart persistence within NOP Commerce because NOP Commerce itself supports cart persistence. So we'll cover all three of those things today. So first off, looking at those out of the box rule actions. Now there are four placeholders here that have uh, different rules and different promotions within that. As you're accessing these, as you're triggering off different conditions, you can see content in any one of these four I'm pulling up different conditions. So the first one here at the top is has at least one product in the cart. If we go and look at that condition there and go and look at the rule, you can see that we have a cart rule based upon uh, quantity. Secondly, there's also a cart rule based upon uh, quantity and uh, value. So you can see here we have another rule. This one is also based upon quantity and a specific item. This one here is based upon cart uh, total value. And last one is based upon uh, triggered goal conditions, which happen to be cart based. So there's actually four different cart rules here in play. And what they're basically doing is as you access uh, and meet different conditions, you will have different content that you will be showing on that page. So we have different promotion texts for each of those. And that's really it. So you have a number of those cart rules and you can take those base cart rules and extend those as necessary, but they're uh, fairly complete as far as uh, simple examples. And they happen to be right on that home page example within the not commerce. Uh, connector starter kit implementation. So let's go back to Sitecore and where we'll go is under engagement plans, uh, sorry, in the marketing control panel first, under engagement plans, you'll see that we have that Commerce Connect and that abandoned carts engagement plan that we set up uh, during the installation of the software. If we click on monitor, we can see the number of users within that plan. And in our case here, because we've only been working with this uh, for less than a day, since I've been doing my testing and uh, running through these videos, we have all five of our test accounts that we created in the initial state. Eventually, you may get uh, cart abandonment if you have emails or if you don't have emails, uh, anonymous users will be shuttled into uh, this bucket. If they're non-anonymous users, so we have their email address, then they'll go through uh, an email state to be reminded of the fact that, that there's those uh, values in the carts. If you click on the uh, initial state, uh, regardless of where you do it in the left here, we'd see a pie with a number of different states, uh, or here we can click on the state itself, and then we can click on view and we can actually see the contacts within that state. So I've got a uh, couple instances of this user, they were different browsers. Uh, I have this anonymous user, and again, I mentioned that anonymous contacts are created in XDB and specifically for um, tracking uh, relative to carts. So an anonymous user can have a cart reinstantiated, and similarly, you can actually see uh, values and data uh, within anonymous users. Uh, regardless of the fact that, of course, they have no email address, so you can't send them follow-up emails, but this is just useful from an informational perspective and allows you to uh, develop different strategies around those anonymous users. So we do see those values there, and then we see our other accounts as well. So now how are 
these carts actually stored? Well, basically in XDB, they're stored as custom data layered on top of those existing automation states within XDB. So if we look again at our analytics database and we look at those automation states, we can see the value in those automation states. And of course, there's five here. And if we pick one of them, we can see that there's this custom values. And what we have is basically that cart entity essentially created as that hierarchy uh, within the uh, XDB document structure. So that exact hierarchy of um, you know, objects and properties in, that you're accessing through the API is here as well. So we can see that for that gym user, uh, you know, such and such uh, shop name, which is the starter kit, uh, whether or not they're in process or abandoned. And you can go detailed into the uh, actual products that they've picked and the totals and various other uh, properties as necessary. So now two things to point out. First of all, I mentioned that you can have different engagement plans for different websites. So if you have multiple web shops being delivered off a single uh, Sitecore Commerce Connect instance, that's very easy to configure. By default, since we named our engagement plan Starter Kit Engagement Plan, it just simply uh, matches up the naming. So uh, we've got our plan name here, Starter Kit is the same name as our website. In that case, it lines up nicely. If you want to name it something else, such that, uh, you know, instead of it being Starter Kit Abandoned Carts, you can easily configure that within an individual site name. So you can manually specify one-offs. This site matches up with this engagement plan. This site matches up with this engagement plan. So that's the first thing to point out. The second thing to point out is that if you want to remove that automatic uh, saving of carts to engagement plan states, well, then you just simply need to remove the pipelines. So there are four pipelines, which makes sense based upon the operations. Uh, save to EA state, EA being engagement automation. Uh, find the cart in the EA state, in which case it's uh, creating or resuming cart. Uh, loading a cart and deleting a cart. So those are the four typical, uh, you know, essentially CRUD content, or sorry, create, read, write, update, and delete operations. So that's why there are four pipelines and you just simply remove the processors from those pipelines and that default behavior is no longer in effect. So, First things first, we're going to disable the pipeline processors, just like we indicated. So we have uh, here a patch file, um, basically called no EA state storage .config, and effectively I have patches to uh, delete all those four processors that we saw within the document. Now we do need to do one thing, and that is for a create or resume cart, we do need to add an additional processor called find cart because in this case here we need to be able to get the uh, user's ID and uh, effectively pass that to not commerce because the pipeline is expecting a user ID and so in the default pipeline implementation uh, the EAP pipeline lookup it's basically looking at the engagement plan to get that in this case and in general, really, you don't need to go to the engagement plan to look it up because you have that information already. You have uh, the current contact ID of the current session uh, always. And so we simply make a pipeline processor to call that and access that value. And that gets used instead. And all the other pipelines that are related to engagement state are removed. Okay, so once we've done that and we actually load up the site and we add a couple items here, you can see that that cart value is getting created. And what's happening is the pipelines now, instead of storing that value in the local engagement plan, it's actually writing that to the cart mechanism within NotCommerce. So if we go to NotCommerce here and we look at our current shopping carts, you can see here that we have this guest account and those are the two items that I just added. I added the uh, ASUS EPC and the Stone uh, 
diamond engagement ring that was coming right here off that home page and those were the two values so forty six hundred dollars and that is again what is created in not commerce so it's now reading and writing to not commerce solely rather than reading and writing to the local engagement plan in this video we're going to talk about order management as well as some of the new pipelines that you see in commerce connect for Sitecore 8. so first off there is no order repository in Sitecore, at least in the current version of Commerce Connect. This was uh, in play in Sitecore e-commerce services, and based upon the model of having uh, abandoned carts stored in Sitecore, uh, it is feasible that a future version of Commerce Connect may in fact have uh, orders stored within the XDB. Uh, certainly it makes sense from the point of view of uh, personalization and understanding that uh, customers buying path uh, a little bit more. But as of now in the current version, that is not the case. One thing to point out about uh, orders and uh, when you are creating orders, again, you need to have uh, Sitecore uh, Commerce Connect customer uh, because address information and whatnot is actually stored on the customer and again the user is simply for uh, authentication purposes uh, you do need to have a customer uh, party uh, created and assigned to that order so again that party is really what is storing the address and contact information uh, for the order itself so that's really all uh, you need to know uh, about order management a lot of that is um, really coding within your solution to match that external uh, order placement and uh, capture on that external e-commerce system. So next we'll discuss some of the new functionality in Sitecore Commerce Connect 8. And these include wish lists, gift cards, loyalty programs, shipping, and payments. So very much like orders and a number of the other functionalities, basically these exist solely to have pipelines to pass through to the external e-commerce system. So unlike, say, products or users, we're not storing any of these uh, within Sitecore. So in all cases, all of that is essentially having uh, pipeline wrappers for calls to that external system. Uh, Wishlist has processors for specific events, so you can have uh, engagement plans uh, triggered by creating or deleting wishlists, uh, but everything else are fairly straightforward. So something like gift cards or loyalty programs, these are really just pipelines for doing uh, lookups and a lot of those um, read-write update uh, operations to that external e-commerce system.